In this topic, we're going to discuss xerophytes and xerophytic adaptations of leaves that reduce transpiration. So we'll look at what are xerophytic plants and what are the xerophytic adaptations of the leaves that reduce transpiration. Now, zero means dry and fight means plant. So plants that are adapted to living in areas where their water losses due to transpiration may exceed their water uptake are called xerophytes. They're typically thought as desert plants, showing a whole range of adaptations to cope with hot, dry conditions. However, similar adaptations may also be seen in plants found in sand dunes, and other dry, windy places where rainfall is high and temperatures relatively low. These adaptations are essential because the rainfall quickly drains away through the sand. At the same time, coastal areas where sand dunes typically occur have got salty soils, and this lowers the water potential of the soil solution, reducing the water potential gradient between the soil solution and the root hair cells thus making osmosis of water into the roots slow. Okay, let's have a look at xerophytic adaptation. So one way of surviving in habitats with an unfavorable water balance is to reduce the rate of which, or at which, water can be lost by transpiration. Since the vast majority of transpiration occurs through the leaves, it's in these organs that there are the most modifications. For example, here you can see a thick waxy cuticle. So this forms a waterproof barrier, reducing the water loss by evaporation from the epidermal cells. Now there can still be transpiration, and this accounts for about 10% of the water loss. The 90% is lost through the stomata. Leaf curling, as you can see this leaf's curled up. Most leaves have got their stomata in the lower epidermis. So curling of the leaves in a way that protects the lower epidermis from the outside helps to trap a region of still air within that curled leaf. This region becomes saturated with water vapor, so there's no water potential gradient between the substomatal airspace and the outside. So, transpiration is reduced. So here you can see a picture of something called marum grass, which rolls up its leaves when transpiration rates are high, for example in hot and windy conditions. Hairs on the lower epidermis, or a thick layer of hairs on the leaves, especially on the lower epidermis, traps the moist air next to the leaf surface. The water potential gradient between the inside and the outside of the leaves is reduced, and therefore less water is lost by transpiration. So sunken stomata, for example, in pits or grooves, as you can see in this picture here, these stomata are sheltered from the air movements and they trap moist air next to the leaf and reduce the water potential gradient. Leaves reduced or absent. So this reduces the surface area to volume ratio of the leaves. Now, having these leaves as small and roughly circular in cross-section, for example in this plant, rather than ones that are broad and flat, reduces water loss. This reduction in surface area must always be balanced against the need for sufficient area for photosynthesis to meet the needs of the plant. Closing the stomata when the transpiration rates are high. So plants such as cacti can close their stomata during the hottest parts of the day. Now some plants called C4 plants use a modified form of photosynthesis that makes more efficient use of carbon dioxide. You'll learn more about this in the second year of A-level. 
Other plants produce something called abscisic acid in response to the stress of dehydration, and this causes the stomata to close. Now remember when explaining adaptations of xerophytic plants to reduce water loss, always relate these adaptations to reducing the water potential gradient, and so reducing evaporation of water and reducing transpiration. So for example, a xerophytic feature, reduction in transpiration rate. The mechanism would be the reduction in leaf area, so an example would be spines on the cacti. Increasing the humidity around the stomata, so having curled leaves, as you saw in that marrow grass, or sunken stomata. Or a thick cuticle, for example, in the agave plant. And that concludes our lesson. The end.